kit lenses. Are kit lenses any good? And what are kit lenses good for? We'll answer those questions and many more, plus some sample images. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Bruce at BetterDigitalPhototips.com. The website and the YouTube channel are full of answers to your questions about digital photography. You may have heard professional photographers criticize using kit lenses. I have a confession. I'm one of those pro photographers who used to do the same thing. But lately, now that the APS-C crop cameras are coming out with such quality images, the kit lenses are worth reconsidering. Kit lenses really suck, man. The video you're watching right now is being shot with a kit lens. Let's just jump right in and show you a couple of examples on how you can use a kit lens. Okay, here's an example of architectural photography. We're gonna start fully zoomed out at 18. We're gonna go into 24 millimeters. Then we'll go into 35 millimeters. And then we'll zoom in all the way to 55. So this was shot uh, across the street on a corner. And at 18, we'll get back there in a second, you'll be able to see that it does a pretty good job of fitting the entire building in. All right, so the next example of the zoom range of the Canon kit lens is a landscape photo. Not a great subject this time of year. It's uh, early spring and I'm stuck uh, with the coronavirus limitations. So, um, but it still good, does a good job to show you the range of zooming on the Canon kit lens. Once again, we'll start at the widest zoom, 18 millimeters, and get the whole view coming into 24 and then 35, get the reflections, then we zoom in all the way and you can see the goose swimming toward the camera. I'm gonna back out all the way to the widest setting where you'll see the sky and the lake. And I shot some wildlife because that same goose got a little closer to the camera. We've already taken a quick look at architectural photography and landscape photography. And yes, you could shoot wildlife if it is really close. Kit lenses ain't so good for sports and wildlife. They ain't long enough. So what about portrait photography and using a kit lens? So for group shots, you get a nice wide view. You could fit quite a few people in a pose like this. Or if you're just shooting an individual, this is what it would look like. Here are a couple of more samples of kit lens photos I shot for this video. With a kit lens, you can take great nature shots, photos of buildings, do some street photography, photograph your favorite pet, take snapshots of yourself in your living room, do some abstract photography, or even long exposure photography, and still life photos. Kit lenses are really good for a lot of types of photography, but they're not great for everything. Now when I say kit lens, I mean the most common lens that's usually packaged as a bundle or a kit with a digital camera when you buy it. Yes, yeah, sometimes you can select from other lenses and customize your bundle, but generally speaking, these are the most common lenses that will come with a the camera. They're general purpose zoom lenses, which give you a range from a moderate wide angle to a moderate telephoto. Here's a couple of the sample kit lenses for the different manufacturers. Canon kit lenses are known as EFS, and they go from 18 to 55. There's several variations. Nikons are DX, also 18 millimeter to 50 by 55 millimeter. Fujifilm, the same thing, 18 to 55 millimeter. And Sony is almost the same, slightly different focal range of 16 to 50 millimeters. Okay, the part you've been waiting for, what's wrong with the kit lens? They're a beginner lens. The optics really aren't as good as the pro lens optics. Kit lenses don't have the same weather sealing that the pro lenses and higher quality lenses often have. Kit lenses have variable maximum apertures. What that means is at the wide angle settings, the maximum f-stop is usually f3.5, but when you zoom into the telephoto setting, the maximum aperture is f5.6. So your ability to get a blurry background is reduced compared to a higher quality lens. The professional lenses have a fixed maximum aperture. This is a 24 to 105 f4. So the maximum aperture stays at f4 at the wide angle 24 millimeter setting as well as the 105 millimeter setting. And this is a 70 to 200 
f2.8 lens, also a professional lens. So its maximum aperture is very wide at f2.8. You can get the really good out of focus background. This is great for portrait, uh, portrait photography. Another disadvantage of shooting with a kit lens is in darker situations. Kit lenses can only open up to a maximum aperture of f3.5. If you shoot with a lens like this 28 to 70 millimeter f2.8, at the maximum aperture, it lets in about 50% more light than a kit lens does at f3.5. It's not a deal breaker for you, you just should be aware that this lets in about 50% more light or about half of an f-stop compared to a kit lens. For wedding and professional event photographers, that could be a big deal. For you, it's not that big of a deal. You should just be aware of the difference between a kit lens and a pro lens and the maximum apertures. So are kit lenses any good? Yes. Are they perfect? No. But no lens is perfect, right? You can shoot great video. You can shoot great photos. Kit lenses are small, they're light, and they're affordable. Look for my upcoming video on a better kit lens to use. Make sure to click that notification bell and then you'll be notified when the new video is available. Don't forget to leave your comment below. I really appreciate your feedback.